Hello and welcome everybody to my inaugural episode over here at StarCityGames.com. I cannot express to you how surreal and awesome it is to say that sentence. Star City Games has been something that I've ingested content all my life. The last 10 years I've been playing Magic, I have watched countless hours of SCG Tour. It's just been a huge part of my Magic career, and it's just an honor to be able to join such an amazing website and such a great crew. So thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to be bringing you arena content week in and week out. We're going to be playing some spicy brews, some established decks, some tier one decks, tier five decks, whatever. We're going to be doing it all. I can't wait to uh, learn with you guys, laugh with you guys, have some fun on this uh, next journey here. So all right, let's get into the magic, right? I'm so excited because our, my first SCG Arena content here is going to be Grixis Midrange. But it's not your standard Grixis Midrange deck that we have seen in the past. In the past, we have seen Grixis decks kind of falter a little bit where they're just a little clunky. You know, there's a lot of four drops. There is, it, it just comes down to the point where if you miss that fourth land drop to not cast Bolas or Rekindling Phoenix, whatever four drops were in the deck at the time, usually just lose on the spot. You can't fall behind when you're just one for one -ing. You need to be constantly keeping on the board. With this deck, it's a lot different. It's a lot more low to the ground and topping out at five mana is huge. It's super huge. Being able to add Dreadhorde Butcher here, I did not think would make such a big difference, but it truly does. It changes the way that you, that the games play out. When you play a turn two Dreadhorde Butcher, that's a spell that ha or that's a creature that has to be dealt with at some point. So you're able to play the game where your opponent has to react to what you're doing and then you just cast another Haymaker, another Haymaker, another Haymaker, while still having some of the most effective removal in the format, as well as, in my opinion, the best Planeswalker in the format, in the form of Nicol Bolas, Dragon God. This Planeswalker is insane. If you're ever at parity or slightly ahead, just ticking up Nicol Bolas just sends them into the abyss so fast. They're just sacrificing something that they truly need each time. And then the next turn, kill something. Then they sack a land. It just, it gets carried away very quickly. So we'll start from the beginning here. I have one duress. It looks kind of weird, but basically I just wanted a fifth thought erasure because this deck does have to be disrupting your opponent's hand to be able to stick cards like Thief of Sanity that can just take over a game if they don't have that one piece of key removal and Thought Erasure and Duress truly help you uh, get by that. Then Dreadhorde Butcher, like I was saying before, the main importance of this is being able to pressure Planeswalkers in this uh, new standard metagame where Planeswalkers are just running rampant. Being able to attack Teferi Time Reveler after it bounced something to your hand and deal with it while still gaining the power of the Butcher is just, it's phenomenal. It's what you need to be doing right now. We have one search for Iskanta just as a way to uh, have some long-term advantage. Even though it is only one, you never really want to draw two of this card. And we don't get a ton of cards in our graveyard rather quickly. So it is more of a late-game spell you want to be casting, but I think it deserves the one of. Then we'll go to the removal spells at two mana. We have two Lava Coils, two, two Tyrant Scorn, and one Angrass uh, Rampage. I like the split and the diversity of these because... I want to be able to have options and be able to have that one lava coil for the rekindling phoenix while still being able to bounce a um, bounce a lyra with tyrant scorn if need be. Just the versatility of these three uh, removal spells I think is very important. We have a four of in the form of uh, bedevil here because I think that is just the best removal you can be having if you're in the Grixis colors. Three mana to point at basically anything is amazing. Noted, notably, the one thing it cannot destroy is enchantments. So white base enchantments are actually insanely good against us, especially Ixalan's Binding. Ixalan's Binding is real bad. Real bad. That's why we have hand disruptions and some counter spells post-board, but that is kind of the bane of this deck's existence. And then Thought Erasure as our last two drop. Thought Erasure is just one of the best cards in standard. Being able to strip a card plus manipulate the top of your deck to kind of fix your draws to be able to curve out. So that's really what Grixis still needs to be doing because it is a lot of one for oneing. But if you can curve out powerful spell into powerful spell into a great removal spell, like that's what you need to be doing with this. For Thief of Sanity, can't forget about this card. I mean, it's just, 
I don't know how many times my opponent has just scooped on sight of this card when they don't have a way to deal with it. Like the card's that powerful that like, oh, no answer. I'm at 20, but yeah, I can't I can't beat that card advantage. Not only getting an extra card each turn, but getting their best card. Leads for some lopsided games for sure. In a shock world that we're kind of in with Is It Phoenix and Red being some of the more popular decks, does make it a little more iffy and it does get sided out decently. So don't uh, don't be jaded by the power level of Thief because it does have its bad matchups. And that's a reason why we're not seeing it in every single Esper Control deck like we have in the past. To Narset, only two, even though I think Narset is one of the best cards from War of the Spark. But we don't, we have a lot of creatures, plain and simple. Like the, this card can miss a good chunk of the time, but its static ability is so good against Phoenix and being able to, you know, most of the time hit. I'm not Frank Carson, so I don't have the numbers for you, but, you know, I've missed plenty of times, but I've also hit, you know, a good majority as well. We got one God Eternal Kefnet. I like having that one creature that just can't die. You know, no matter what, if it gets exiled, it's going back into the library. And five toughness is a very key number right now. A lot of lava coils running around. And like, that's why we're seeing like Ripjaw Raptors and Lyra's coming back in full force because it's the way to deal with Mono Red. And Mono Red is the best and most prevalent deck right now. So I would not be surprised to be adding more God Eternal Kefnets if, uh, if Mono Red is like your for sure expected number one deck at a tournament. And then we got our power, the namesake. We are playing a Bolus deck. So we got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bolus effects. I mean, it's just so great to be consistently casting them. And if you ever go turn four Nicol Bolas the Ravager into Nicol Bolas Dragon God, it's just like, you just feel on top of the world. Then I'm going to squeeze over here. We'll take a peek at the sideboard here before we start playing the games. So we got uh, two Duress here with the one in the board for any kind of control matchup. I think four Duress is extreme, especially when we have four Thought Erasures. Um, you really want to you really want them against like uh, Nexus Esper Control even Esper Midrange tends to go more Esper Control against us because we have so much removal that you normally want to bring those in maybe more you bring in all seven on the draw a little bit more when you're trying to react to your opponent on the play I like to be more proactive and not have seven uh, hand disruptions in play this deck does change severely for play and draw so i want you to be mindful of that whenever you're playing these games like dreadhorde butcher much better on the play duress much better on the draw you really gotta th think about your role when you're sideboarding with this deck be like do ask yourself a simple question it'll help you out tons am i the aggressor or am i the am i reacting to the aggressor am i the control player and that solves a lot of problems of how you should be sideboarding, and that involves Dreadhorde, Butcher, and Duress a lot of the times. Of course, you know, you're not going to leave Tyrant scoring in against Nexus, stuff like that. Um, kind of the more obvious stuff that we'll uh, dive into when we get into the games. We got two Negates over there, two Negates up there. Counter spells are not very good because any blue deck that you want to be countering with the exception of Nexus, uh, blue-green Nexus, and sometimes even Nexus decks are playing Bant colors so that they can play Teferi Time Reveler. Teferi Time Reveler definitely has stopped the control magic from being as prevalent of a sideboard card. It used to be four negates in your sideboard, no question, let's go, sleeve it up, what are the, my other 11 slots? Teferi has changed the game when it comes to that. You need to be more proactive against these decks, and you need to be playing cards like the Elder Spell. The Elder Spell is what you want against most of these uh, Teferi, Time Reveler, Planeswalker-based decks. It is just the most powerful thing you can be doing for two mana against these types of shells. I've even seen some lists that main deck in it, and I don't even think it's that crazy. It's just really a metagame call on that one. I think it belongs in the sideboard, and if you can ever Elder Spell and put counters on Nicol Bolas Dragon God, it's like, <laughs> good game. All right, we'll move on to Lava Coil here. I think it's the best and most effective removal spell right now because there's a lot of four toughness, and there's Rekindling Phoenixes, which is a nightmare to deal with with this deck. Outside of Lava Coil, it's just almost impossible. So I, that would be one reason to maybe even have four of them. I would not fault you for adding another one. Two Cry of the Carnariums for any white-based deck or Mono Red if on the draw if you're trying to um, uh, have a card to kind of catch up. Anything that's trying to go wide on you here, you definitely have to keep, uh, 
keep those strategies in check because we are a deck that is better and more well suited to deal with big threats that come down on a turn by turn basis. But if they're playing three sets of three, three threats a turn, you have to have some kind of plan for that. And then we got three Legion War Boss right here. Um, I think this is the best way to attack control based strategies. It's another threat that must be answered immediately. Plus it can poke Planeswalkers on the turn you play it. Very important. And our last card down here is Enter the God Eternals. This is our aggro card, ladies and gentlemen. Being able to even be somewhat stable by turn five, even if we're at like 10 life, Casting an Enter the God Eternals, killing a creature, gaining four, putting a 4-4 four, four into play is almost lights out for any aggressive base strategy here. And I really think it warrants the spot and I think it's just so good. Being Other, other than that, we could do like Ritual of Soot or something like that. But I think that card's a little narrow and I think Enter the God Eternals is just a much better, stronger impact card. All right, that's it for the for my very first deck tech over here at Star City Games, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned for round one.